Welcome to the Honest Business Podcast. This is the show for ambitious, value-driven business owners who are actively building a business that works for them. Hi, I'm Mae James, and I'm here to make scaling your business easier and more rewarding than ever. Each week, we will dive into simple, sustainable strategy and pragmatic leadership discussion to support you as you take imperfect action on your entrepreneurial journey. If you want to stay ahead, exceed your growth goals, and have a purposeful, thriving business, then keep on listening. Hello and welcome back to the Honest Business Podcast. I am back today with a great episode. It is all about what to do when your business is going really well and you're booked out and maybe you're not sure what your next step is. This is such an important conversation and a one that often isn't really spoken about very much. You could also use this, what we're going to share, this kind of walkthrough with if you've sold your business, maybe you're changing your business, you know, if basically if you're at a point in the road where you're like, I need to change or you've reached a goal. I think this is a big conversation about, you know, when you get to where you want to go, there's not very much information, strategy around what do you do next. And so this is a great conversation. And I think it's a one, you know, over the last year, I've been lucky enough to have with quite a few people because quite a few people have hit the goals. They've got the business to where they want it to be. They have ticked off all the things on the vision board that has been going on and sometimes people will come to me to work together for that reason and that's a really lovely piece of work to do together and it's often something where people need someone to hold space for them and not many people can hold space at that level of really understanding the intricacies and the kind of changes that go on and the kind of the way that we think about our life and our business as we kind of hit off and tick these scaling goals. So I'm going to dive straight in today with just, this is where, this is kind of how I'd walk you through it and this is what I would suggest you start thinking about and I'm sure this is going to be a really useful episode if you are in this situation at the moment. However, what I would say is if you listen to this episode and you feel like, do you know what, actually I really want to spend some time with someone to be able to go through this and, you know, there's, there's other things we do beyond what I'm going to share here. And you want to create a plan for you going forward that's really uses all the things I'm going to talk about today, then come and hit me up and have a conversation and we can look at working together in a really cool way to allow you to get clear in your head and get the clarity that you're searching for. Because I think often when we hit our goals and when we get the business where we want it to be, it can sometimes feel quite a lonely, disruptive place. And you know, I think I've spoken about this before, business owners can then go back and they can really start like causing havoc in their businesses and havoc in their teams, which is obviously not what we want. It's not intentional. It's often, you know, subconscious and you don't want that. So this is a really serious conversation. It is something that people need to, I'd argue, take more seriously because I have seen complete disasters happen, which I think we did back way back when the podcast began about the dark side of hitting your goals, maybe like episode three, maybe. It was a really popular episode, actually. And this kind of leads on from that and is more so about what do you practically do once you're kind of booked out and it is going well. But yeah, if you want to come and have a conversation, find me on Instagram, you can find the website www.mayjames.com, you can email me may at mayjames.com. There's so many different options for you, but you can reach out and we can have a chat and kind of look at where you're at because it is a piece of work that's important to do and it, that having a strategy allows for it to to become more real because I think sometimes people feel bad and they almost deny themselves support because they think that you know it's a a great problem to have or woe is me or you know what am I supposed to do now but it is a serious thing and I can hold space for you in that way. So let's get into it. Right one of the first things I suggest you do is just audit your business. Work out what's working, what isn't, what do you like. A lot of people they get to this point and it's operating, it's working, it's functioning it really makes sense for you to, you know, continue on. You might not want to grow it any further and that's fine. You might want to bring someone in to grow it for you. There's so many different options. However, what I would suggest is one, you look at your systems. So go through and really assess all of your systems, all of your processes, all your SOPs in place, are all of your operationally sound, is there operationally sound things going on? Are there things that need tweaking and improving? Because often, you know, we're bootstrapping or you know, we're getting to the business to where we want it to be. And that can come with a lot of compromise. It can come with a lot of kind of movement and it's scrappy and that's good, right? That's building a business. But this is a real nice chance for you to come and shift that and really step into a different version of 
the business and refinement. So refinement's a really important stage in your business growth journey. And it's a cycle that repeats itself on and on. But I would really recommend for you now is a great point for you to look and really see, do you need to get an operations consultant in? Do you need to get your team together? Are you going to personally lead the project? Or do you need to get support in from an expert? Is there systems that you're using that actually the team don't want to use and they'd rather use something else? Yada, yada, yada. It's a great opportunity to look at that. And particularly in terms of your SOPs and further than that, more so like your whole business operating manuals, handbooks, trainings, all of that jazz. It's a really great time for you to get clear and make sure everything is in sync. Everything has review dates on. Everything's really clear. Everything has a video walkthrough and a written walkthrough if that's what you need. Everything is accessible for everybody on your team and their accessibility needs, etc, etc. Next thing, I would look at amending slash changing your pricing. Now, this is one thing where I just think people should do it. If you are a one-man band, a two-man band, you know, freelance team, and you haven't got this massive, huge, like, 25-person team, even if you do, you can still do this, but I'm talking more so to people who have hit their goals and you're like, actually, I don't want to build a massive business. I want the business to support my lifestyle and I want to work 10 hours a week, 5 hours a week, 2 hours a week, 20 hours a week, 40 hours a week. That's fine. Look at your pricing. I would say up it. Most people need to up it, especially if you're booked out. Up the pricing. Just makes total sense, in my opinion. Up your pricing, change your pricing, make sure everyone is at the right pricing and you haven't got someone who you've had in your business for like six years and they're still paying something that you charged them six years ago. Like, sort your pricing out. Next thing is drop the shit clients. If you've got clients that you don't like working with, they're a pain in the ass, they don't pay their invoice on time, whatever it is, get rid of them. You're in a position where you can, obviously don't just cut them off, I'm not suggesting you do that. You know, I have a whole process that I would suggest you follow in terms of how to drop clients well and how to give them ultimatums and how to help, you know, make it work. But if you're at a point where you listen to this and you know that there's clients where you're like, actually, they're just not part of the brand, they're not where we want to go, they're not easy to work with, or, you know, you've just drifted apart, or actually you think someone can better serve them and you're kind of doing them a disservice by you taking the money every month when actually someone else could do a better job, get rid. Get rid of them. It creates more space or it actually creates just a calmness around and makes people's lives easier. The other thing for you to look at is do you want to bring in a different revenue stream? So sometimes people are kind of, you know, you get to the point and you get, you build your business model how you want it to be and you hit that and then actually it's time to move. And I'd say most people then move into something else. So it might be that you're going to add an education arm to your business. It might be that you're going to add an agency arm to your business. It might be that you're going to provide some kind of service, you're going to add, you know, speaking into your thing, you're going to add a personal brand in, like whatever you decide to do, there's options. So think about that. And if you're going to add an arm to your business, do you want it to be a passive offer? As in, do you want to create passive income? Do you want to create semi-passive income? Do you want to do stuff that requires more team? Most people in this position don't want to add more team and you don't want to add more stress, but you might want to create a passive income stream or a semi-passive income stream. That's the sort of thing where I can help people, you know, I can help you build that out and create a plan and the whole implementation of it. it you know, that's where I can really help you thrive. So that is a great option. Maybe you want to serve people in a one-to-many capacity versus just serving people one-on-one. So that might be something you do if you do a lot of one-to-one work and you're a consultant. You might think, actually, it's time for me to use all this amazing knowledge information that I help people with and like get the message out there and if you do then that's great and that's an option you can definitely look into doing. That would be my kind of next point. The other thing to look at is how can you continue to grow if you want to? So this is a caveat. So do you want to develop your team? Do you want, if you've built an agency and the goal was like let's get to a hundred grand a month in recurring revenue and you're there Do you want to get it bigger? Do you want to go to 500 grand a month? Do you want to go to a million a month, 10 million a month? Like, what do you want to get it to? And then I would say, like, this is a perfect time for you to really get some experts in, to really get clear on where you want to go and then cut the time down it's going to take to get there. Because this is the one thing I see where it goes wrong. If you, you know, you've got yourself to 50 grand a month, say, and you're like, right, actually, let's go for 100 grand a month. But then you do the same thing to to get there that you did to get to 50 grand that's where it goes wrong do not do that please don't do it yes it'll work it probably will work but it's not the answer and it's not something I'd recommend doing 
there's people like me and there's other people around who can support you in getting there way faster and to build the team in a way that makes sense as you scale and grow. That's kind of an option to think about. I touched on this before, talking about speaking now and personal brand. So you can, you can at this point obviously build out your personal brand. And what I mean that is I just mean that you, if your business is not you, as in, you know, you're, you don't have your name on your business, or even if you do have your name on your business, but the thing you provide is not you speaking, you could turn to speaking engagements. And if you want to provide coaching or mentoring or that kind of vibe, you can definitely go off on a sideline and do that. You can keep it under the same umbrella as your business, depending on what your business does. If it's something that's completely different, then maybe not. And maybe you want to kind of separate that out. And I would say you can definitely look into that. The one thing I would say, though, is that that is a very obvious choice to people and it's great. But people have to remember that that is a skill that takes a lot of time to master, in my opinion. So you might have all the information, all of the kind of knowledge, but you may need to take a decent chunk of time to actually learn and craft your craft in that because that's what it ultimately is but you can definitely create you know a different hobby a different side income a different side hustle a different whole business if you wanted to from your speaking and coaching and that can become you know a whole six figure seven figure revenue stream if you want it to be and I think this is the the whole point of this conversation today is about you getting really clear on what do you want And I'm kind of throwing around different ideas here, but it's about you getting clear on what is it that you actually want to do. Because not everybody wants to do the speaking, or some people want to do the speaking but not the coaching, or some people want to mentor people and they want to do it for free and they don't want to charge people for it, and that's fine. Some people will say, right, I'm going to take on two people a year for like a year-long coaching, mentoring thing, and they're going to pay 50 grand or 100 grand a year. And that's kind of what you do in that arena. Like it is totally up to you and that's absolutely fine. You just need to think about what do you want to get from this. The biggest pointer that you need to do beyond the tactical business stuff at this point is you need to go back to your dream day. You need to get really clear on just your dream setup and how you want your life to be. Hopefully you'll be living it right now as you're listening to this if your business is where you want it to be and it's going well and you're kind of booked out and you're not sure where to go next, I would hope that you're there. And for some of the people I've spoken to this year about this, they are, which is so beautiful. Or they're, you know, they're there in pretty much one capacity or another, given how much the world has changed since when they made their first goals. And so if you're at that point, just reassess your dream day. And if you're at this point, but you're not at the dream day, then think about that and go back to your dream life, your dream week, your month, your year. You really need to spend time around creating that. Again, if you want support with that, I can help you to do it because I know that that sounds so simple, but for some people that's really difficult to get your head around to allow yourself to. There's a lot of sort of coaching that has to go on to kind of guide you through that to get to the actual truth rather than what you write down. Often the first thing you write down might not be the thing that you actually want. It's the thing that we think we have to put or we have been conditioned into believing is the right thing to do. And so I would recommend, you know, if you want to do that together and that piece of work, then as I say, reach out because that's something we can definitely do together. So you're going to look at your dream day and get really clear on what does that look like because that's then going to give you a lot of the answers of the questions I've asked you previously about income streams and revenue and money and, you know, how much money you want to make. So then switching back to current day, so you've done your dream day and that might be that you're in it right now or you're not, I then need you to audit what is currently the biggest time suck for you, like what takes up the most of your time, what is the thing you're spending your most time on, you need to do a time audit, you know I really recommend people do these semi-regularly, it's so important to kind of see where your time is at but you really need to look at what is the major thing going on here and then what changes would you like to make ideally? So it might be that actually you then spend like five hours a week on meetings with team and you don't want to. You want to only do one hour a week. Different things will come up for you depending on your business model. Some of it will be that you don't like how you have to talk to clients five days a week and you only want to talk to them three days a week or two days a week. Whole other different things, you know, like there's so many different options here, but get really clear on your time because we know you can make as much money as you want to make. Money is like infinite. Time is not. Time is really, really scarce and not to be too morbid but we've only got a limited time on this planet and we don't know how long that is each one of us has a different amount of days and so there is no point in just waiting 
and waiting and waiting to live. We've got to start living in the everyday. I had this, I'll go off tangent slightly here, a story that my dad shared with me recently that, you know, he was saying about how his friend has, is in his 70s, quite late 70s, and has never drawn a pension. And he has this great, massive, huge pension, multiple pensions, and he's never drawn it. And my dad was like, well, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> he's in his late 70s and he just hasn't, he hasn't done it. And there's quite a morbid side to that story that I'm not going to go into because it's not really my story to share. But needless to say that it is a really awful and tragic one. And it's the one that really makes the hairs stand up on the back of your neck and you think, oh my goodness, we've got to just keep living every single day as if it is potentially our last. Which I know is quite cliche, but I really do believe in it. So yes, let's not kind of save up and wait for this random day where we're going to start living our lives. Let's live it every day. And so that means you really need to make sure that you've got everything clear from your end of what do you want. Next, you need to look into your money and really learning to manage your money, to make your money grow, to look at investments. This is where I really think it's important that you get clear on that. And again, you might need some support from that from a professional. You don't have to go at this alone often kind of getting the right people in your life and your world can really help with that so whether you need a financial advisor you want to do some financial education you want a financial mentor there's so many different options and multiple options you know around that that will work for you and where you're at and where you're at in the world so really think about right the money side of things not just even in the day-to-day but also longer term but in the day-to-day is really important looking at you know do you want to retire when do you want to retire do you want to continue working for the next 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or 40 years and and what does that look like so getting really clear from that perspective is important the other thing I wanted to kind of mention is that this is a beautiful time for you to go and enjoy your life to live it and to just rest and be and enjoy everything that you've created enjoy the hard work because you'll have gotten here from really grafting your ass off and so you're probably tired and it's a great time to just chill out And there's nothing wrong with taking three months, six months, a year, two years, three years to just do that, to coast, to chill, to enjoy things. That's a really important part of this process. And we create businesses for a reason and we have a reason why we started them. And yes, there's a why for others, but most of the time, and you know, most people, everyone has a why for themselves. Of course they do. It's important to. And so often that why is very connected with the end point of business. Not that there is ever an end point, but you know, that that final destination that people have in their head, that key moment. Go and live that key moment. I want you to go and live it, you know? Go and take the family on a holiday. Go and do the things that you've been wanting to do. Take a massive trip, you know, buy the handbag, whatever it is for you. Go and rekindle that friendship that fizzled out 20 years ago. Like, anything that comes up for you, that's important. And it's time for you to really go and do that. So that would be my next kind of tip for you. If it's a tip, I'm not sure it's really a tip, but that's kind of the next point. And then leading on from that is let yourself get inspired because I can pretty much guarantee that's going to come up. You know, you, you will get inspired as you're going about your day, as you're living, as you're traveling, as you're doing different things. You will get inspired and let the inspiration come. Write it down. You don't have to act on it straight away. In fact, I'd say for most people don't act on it straight away. Just write it down and start collecting ideas you know, let's just chill out and like see where things go for you. Similarly to this, I would really recommend taking some kind of internalization and stabilization time from a business perspective. Now, these are two separate things, they're connected, but in your team and your business, you've grown to a certain point. Internalization is really important for everyone to get clear on them in the business and where they're at. So even if it's just you, which is great, by the way. I'm not saying even if it's just you, just as in like, oh, it's only you. Like, if it's you, fantastic, amazing. You need to really take some time to internalise where you've gotten to and where you've come from. And that really takes time to like seep into you, like from a 100% perspective, like a really deep rooted perspective. And then from a stabilisation perspective, that is where we really kind of chill out a bit. And we let the business support you. And the stabilization phase is really key for building your self trust and for letting your team internalize a lot of the things that have often been going on that no one realizes on the surface. And this is quite hard to explain on a podcast that, you know, this whole 
stabilization, maybe we should do a podcast episode on, but stabilization is really key to embed everybody in, to really let processes stick and to really allow for smoothness and ease to come in to business. And stabilization will have happened before this point. So you will have gone through stabilization phases multiple times potentially during the business growth. But once you get to this point of business that you're at now, where your business is going really well and you're not sure what the next step is, take some stabilization time to just be and to see where the business moves. And obviously external factors are going to come in and lots is going to happen. So this is just going to like continue to snowball, right? So the business is always going to be changing. There's going to be changes you need to make. You've got to be responsive. That's all naturally going to be there, but you can still, the business will still stabilize and it will still go through a motion of getting it to where it is. And it's very strange because it's hard to document this, okay? So often you don't know you're in stabilization. (laughs) You will come out of a stabilization phase and then realize you've been in it or you come out of it and then realize, oh my goodness, we have no documentation of what it was like beforehand. And again, that's not bad. It's not that you're a bad business owner. It's just some of this stuff is really difficult to document and to fully kind of not put into the physical but like kind of if that makes sense (laughs) like it's a bit it's kind of the stuff that happens on a surface level but below the surface that's kind of ruminating and it's just a natural progression for business but it's nice to intentionally say we're gonna let the business have a stabilization first that's really great the next point is all about resetting your goals and recalibrating your legacy. Now, ooh, this is a fun conversation. Again, maybe we will do a podcast episode on legacy, but resetting your goals really important. So if you've gotten to this point, most people will have come from a goal orientation place. If you're not, then that is fine, but most people will have done if you're listening to this podcast. So you are used to setting goals, setting ambitions, setting intentions, whatever you want to call them, and then kind of getting there and working towards them you may feel very strange and have a bit of a wobble when you don't have loads of goals. It's okay for you to make different goals. It's okay for you to make none as well. If you want to try and lean into a different way of living and you're like, actually, I don't want to do the goals thing anymore and I don't want to live in a goal-oriented way, that's totally fine. But if you do feel like you need that, there's definitely other goals that you can look at, especially outside of business as well. Like now's a beautiful time for you to focus on your health or your fitness or you know your family your relationships your friendships your hobbies like there's so many fun things that you can do that you can create goals around that isn't business money team related leadership that has been on you know for however long and then recalibrating your legacy is really important so what I mean by that is you need to reassess what you want because most people by the time they get to the end point they feel like what they wrote was really funny and they like laugh at it if that makes sense because they're like that's so far from what they wanted now and that's fine right because that's just part of the process and I think many of us can relate to that of you know even at the start of the year you write a goal and then you read it again in December and you're like oh what that didn't make sense to me or I don't really want to I don't want that anymore so you really need to look at your legacy and what you want that to be And think about legacy from a perspective of what does that word mean to you? Because when we talk about legacy, it's really important that you get clear on what that is personally. It's not about anyone else. It's not about what I think it is. It's about what it means to you. Do you want to leave a legacy? You don't have to. You really don't. I think people get very like obsessed with this and it becomes a bit bizarre. I think it gets a bit bizarre because you're like, well, what are you even talking about? So do you want to leave a legacy? what do you want to leave? Do you want to have something? Do you want to create something? Do you want to leave something? Like, what is it that you actually want? Do you want people to feel something? Do you want something to have changed in policy and government? Do you want something to have changed in culture? What exactly do you want to happen? And then what does that look like? And you know, that can look like so many things. It can look like books and you sitting in certain voluntary roles and certain leadership roles. It can mean you know, writing things, creating things, making things, so many whole host of of different areas for you to kind of dive into. But legacy can be a really beautiful thing to kind of think about. Finally, we have the final point, which is potentially the most biggest point and the one that people come to me. This is like the most common thing that most people want to do and it's exciting and it's fun and it's like the bit that I get really, like, it's, it's exciting. 
should you start a new business? That is the question that most people come to me with. It's like, right, I've done this. I've made this happen. What next? They're an entrepreneur. Normally, they've got a lot of ideas and fun and things inside them they've wanted to do for years and years. And then they've stuck by their goals and said, no, I'm going to keep going and make sure this is works and make sure I get where I want it to go and that's not start the business and then now they're like should I do another business so I'm gonna do a podcast episode I think on this because a lot of people come and ask me about when should you start another business I obviously have multiple businesses you know when should you do it what I'm gonna say is yes if you want to start another business and you've hit your goals and you've got that business to where you want it to be it's profitable it makes money it's stabilized done the stabilization process go for it. Why not? Have another business, start another business. So bloody exciting. It's so fun. And I really recommend it to people. I think it's amazing. I don't think people should feel like they have to have multiple businesses, but I think if you do want multiple businesses, it's really fun and really cool. And I think the thing to do is not start multiple businesses too soon because personally, I just don't think it makes the most sense, which, you know, people disagree with me on and that's fine. But if you want a like smooth process, I would really argue that there's a set of things that you want to go through before you start a new business and have then like multiple to manage, etc. But it's so exciting. And if you have a urge to start a new business, whether that's in a completely different category, a different industry, uh, maybe you're going to start a product based business and you're normally a service based or vice versa, or you're going to have two service or two product, whatever. It's really exciting and it's so fun. So definitely go down that route if that's something you're you know, question in your head and you really fancy doing, again, use your common sense, use your business knowledge and use all your experience. I would really recommend getting a clear plan and a clear strategy. I think once you've done it once, you can know a lot of things. Putting that into practice and actually knowing the next steps can be harder. So again, that sort of thing where you come and do a CEO strategy day with me can be a really nice option where we can map out a whole business for you, growth plans, launching, you know, all the different areas of your business, your marketing plans, like all sorts of stuff. And you can go away pretty much in a day with a whole business mapped out, ready to go. And that's something we've done with people of of helping them get really clear on what they want to create and how they can get there fastest. So yeah, that's a really fun option, but definitely start a business if you want to. Like if you feel that urge and you feel like that's what I want to do and that's what I meant to do, then of course go for it and I think the joy with the second business is that you can make it fun and you can make it really like fit in with your lifestyle and what you want it to do and it can be this more not that it's not a serious business but like it can be a passion project that is goes at a pace you want it to be and some people are like no I'm I'm starting it it's not a passion project it's like a full-on let's go 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 and you're going to scale it maybe you get investment maybe you're doing this like it can be completely like an amazing huge massive thing if you want it to be But it's also nice to know that it doesn't have to be and it can be something that you enjoy doing whilst maybe you're retired or maybe you're just going to work on it for like four hours a week and that's all it needs. Like that's totally cool as well. Um, It's all kind of relevant and all specific to what you want it to be. So those are my kind of pointers for you for what to do when your business is going well and you're booked out and you're not sure what your next steps are. As I've mentioned throughout this episode, this is the sort of thing that I can really and well equipped to help you with and to support you through. So come and have a conversation with me. We can have a chat. We can look at options. We can look at what you need and what makes the most sense. But don't struggle with this alone. Some people find it a struggle. Some people don't. Either way, whether you're enjoying it or whether you're finding it a bit overwhelming and you're a bit confused and lost and seeking clarity, I can definitely support you and help you to get to where to get to that new excitement level I think the fun thing about this is right is sometimes by this point we've lost the excitement of starting a business because you you know you've started a business you've grown you've grown it you've done all the things you want to do with it and you're now in the maintenance phase and you're kind of completing a lot of the things that you set out to do and so sometimes we're ready for a bit more of excitement and whether that's excitement in our lives and our personal things or whether that's actually you want to start a new business I can definitely help support you in making that a reality and continuing on your entrepreneurial journey. If you've enjoyed this episode, I would really love if you could leave a rating wherever you're watching, watching, listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever. Leave a five star review and leave me a little comment. It'd be really lovely. And I will be back next week. So have a fantastic week ahead and I will see you then. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Honest Business Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure that you are subscribed. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others and leave a rating and review. 
To catch up with all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at may.james underscore, where I share the raw, uncut, behind the scenes reality of what running multiple businesses every day truly looks like. As always, links and any resources that were mentioned in the episode will be in the show notes below. That's all for this episode, and I look forward to seeing you next time.